This is Flash Somebody Live at in 20% off on the RealLibertyMedia.com chat room that I play in on. Uh, well, I guess this is Thursday. For me, it's already Friday. But we're gathering today on the uh, the 8th or the 7th day of March 2019. So let me check if I'm live here. We've had trouble because of hardware and software failure lately. So I'm going to ask if they can hear me now in the RLM saying get on with the show and say hello to all the people out there and the, the bots and bodies that occupy the seats of the electronic room that we play in. Okay, so I take it Rob works says I'm live, and uh, the first thing we do on, on all the stuff lately is say thanks to Grim, who puts up with all the shit he puts up with, and helps us do all the stuff we do. And then I like to say hello to the the Real Liberty Media chat bots and bodies that hang out. All right, I'm going to do it different this time. I'm going to start at the bottom and go to the top. We've got a new one here on the chat. Weather Dork, Uno, Tech Man, Sock Puppet, Pwn Sauce, Ninson, Dubois, Kiss, Kozu, Jays, Nines, Jays, Java, Doctor 2, Java Doctor, HWRA, Frumpy, Gooberzilla, me, Flash Somebody, Dakota, Cyber, Cyborg Noodle. Uh, my wife's in bed. She must have left her machine on. Uh, Beetle Phantom, Vinny, Vanna White, the bot. Uh, Rome's Rob Works, the bubbler. Rain, Ponder Gander, Vinny. Uh, Woody, Meister Brow. I be Don C. Graham Z. Chelsea Doni, Beth C. Asmo. Brackets, DC, Miss Kate, Moose Girl, Grimner, Cowboy Tech, and the Barman. And that's the lineup for uh, entertainment in the chat room tonight if you guys want to chitter chatter with your friends. And tonight's the solo show. Uh, I'm not going to have a uh, guest tonight. And we're going to ponder through this here particular program. I come up with a good one, I hope, for you guys. And I'm going to call it, excuse me, ah, a modern day guide to what is really going on. And what I wanted to start out with is, for example, if, uh, if I was new to this freedom jazz and the government's a bunch of bullshit, and, okay, how do you prove it? And I'm going to tell you a story before I go into the show that got me to where I'm at right now. Uh, I'm getting to the point in, in the chat room where if I've never heard your voice or I've never seen uh, you post a picture of, of where you're at, you don't have to put yourself in it. But Cowboy Tech posts pictures of where he resides on his information sometimes, on the like the RLO. For example, so I've decided that if you're just all type and you don't want to talk on the wire, or you don't want to do radio or post a link about what great deeds you do, you don't exist. I must draw the line in my reality. And uh, <laughs> I decided I'm going to start with that. If there's no physical proof that you exist outside of what you type on the screen... You're not real. You're just a storyteller. Because, I mean, anonymity is one thing, but people have lives. And some people on the RLM know each other. <laughs> I know somebody that I brought to the RLM from another site, but he came here to Denmark to visit me in Cirque. So, you know, there's witnesses. Me and Cirque had our... Uh, wedding thing that we did we had it on youtube thing uh 
so that people that were from the States could see it if they wanted to get up that early to watch it. It was fun, too. I had a blast. We got married by a girl in a, like a hobbit uh, hood, green. She looked like an elf. It was just insane. And then my nephew-in-law drops the camera at her feet during the ceremony. So we got a little kid down there crawling around her feet while she's performing this marriage ritual. And, I mean, that's just the physical side of it. And then it turned out that the the day we picked is a military holiday. So every, every year, I can't forget because they set off these warning, uh, like, sirens everywhere in Denmark. So you hear it sooner or later. And that was the day that we decided to do do this marriage thing and I've been in Denmark I hit five years Tuesday so we're still doing all right I still like Denmark Denmark still tolerates me and uh, the game goes on anyway I think the first link that I would recommend to somebody that's you know downing their fed but still hopeful would be uh, meet your straw man and oh, <laughs> we're on RLM, so you guys, you guys know all the straw man games. Well, most of you. There's a few holdouts, but there's a, just a few. And I, I understand being hopeful, but there, there's this thing in life called sanity, and it's gauged on all the wrong shit. Because one of the things that to judge your sanity is they'd ask you like, "Who's the president?" Goldman Sachs. Oh, you're insane. But, <laughs> see, now there's the truth, but if you go, Donald Trump, oh, you're all right. You get it. <sighs> oh, my goodness. Anyway, and, and another thing, I just read this just uh, earlier in the week. The trouble in Venezuela. This has nothing to do with politics or their socialism or anything that we've been told. This is about Koch oil. The Koch brothers have a refinery in America and they want the dirty, filthy shit oil. And, of course, when the dirtier you buy something, the better the price. Well, the guy holding that seat of power in Venezuela, he decided, wait a minute, I think we're going to put a a little extra charge on this extra shitty stuff that this extra greedy prick in America wants. So, there you go. Uh, hmm, weather, Weather dorks got things going on with my name popped up. And I don't try not to open shit when I'm on our, on the uh, air solo, but okay, I'll give this a shot. If I blow up the internet, I didn't mean to. Kaboom. Anyway, uh, so tonight we're. Uh, wow, I don't get what all that was about. Mm, somebody playing games on the RealLibertyMedia.com. Hey, Donna just showed up. Hello, Donna. You weren't in the lineup when I started this program. And uh, what do we got going on in life that's. Uh, so exciting. Well, anyway, these scotch fuckers, they want that cheap, shitty oil at a, pr you know, premium dirt riot price. And uh, Mr. Venezuela said no. Well, Trump's involved in all this shit. It's probably how he got the game, uh, the White House, because, you know, Hillary was a killer, but she wasn't much of a businessman. So you can at least pass... Uh, the illusion of Trump off as a successful businessman. He belongs in this game, blah, blah, blah. Nah. They want a pipeline. <laughs> That's all this is about. For the Koch brothers who are freaking older than dirt, they couldn't spend all the money they got. If they did spend it, they could spend it on all of us, and we'd be comfortable forever. But that's not how life works. We got a different game going on. Which is, you know, why? A modern-day guide 
to what's really going on because the according to the news people and the educated this is about socialism hey those uh those bastards are mistreating their people and uh, for the world i can't find a more mistreated people than the people that i come from and i say that because i personally saw Bill Clinton apologized for experimenting on the American public without their knowledge or consent. Well, that was in the 90s. So, chances are I might have been one of those people, or I know one, at the very least. Hmm. You know, like I always say, it's up for interpretation, but don't be ignorant, you know. Being hopeful is one thing, but willful ignorance, looking at this freaking monster America bullshit, UK, France, it's it's all, it's so frustrating to me, and I think that because um, I found comfort, and I think that when, when you're comfortable, you can't see other people's problems. But if I was in a lot of strife and I was uncomfortable and life was a drag, well, then everything I read would make complete sense. But hmm, I tend to wonder about you know, what the things I read, what do they really mean? Because as it turns out, some of us know this, that don't don't go telling anybody but we've been lied to a time or two about how events took place and you can watch these things with your own two eyes and the government will tell you that you didn't see what you saw and people will believe it because the government's got the news to harp it every day day in and day out until you just get tired of fighting it and you go, okay, okay, it's that way, president guy. I was enjoying a sip of my ginger tea. Yep, I went full tilt ginger tea tonight. And that stuff's strong, too. If you make it really strong, it'll even clean your eyeglasses for you from the sweat coming off your forehead but anyway that's for another show maybe the dork table i'll talk to Vinny about the proper ways to use ginger because you can cook with ginger too i think make cookies and what else i think when i was a kid that we had ginger ale but i don't know if i guess it sounds the same but I don't really remember everything that well from when I was a kid now. Anyway, back to my assistance in a modern day guide to what is really going on. Because, you know, like the story about Venezuela, you know, it depends on your source of knowledge. And if, you, if you're going to watch TV and catch links on the internet from Fox News and CNN, you're going to catch all that crap about... Oh, they mistreat their people. Uh, no, <laughs> I saw people living in tents and boxes and squalor in America recently. So, hmm, who's treating who what? <laughs> and this fucking wall thing, good God. So, they've got overcrowded cities on the borders already. Any big city that's close to San Diego, L.A., Tucson, Phoenix, Albuquerque, San Antonio, wherever you go close to that southern border, they're already overcrowded. So they're going to have more people come in, and where are they going to go? Let's think, and what are they going to do for a living? What are they going to do for entertainment? <laughs> Thank you, politicians, people. If you, and if you haven't figured it out that it's the politicians doing it, um, there you go. Ginger ale is still out. Yeah, it's probably here too, 
but the Danish, I got to ask Cirque for a translation or look it up on the internet. But uh, I'm not big on dr soda drinks anymore, but I just remembered that when I was young, we used to have ginger ale. And it was a very unique flavor. It was different than everything else. And it's similar to this, but this is just ginger in hot water with a little sugar to make my brain feel better. Um. Oh, Vinny's talking to uh, Grimner on the main feed of the RLM. And uh, I was getting a big old ego and thought he was saying something to me. Because they got a new bot, Weather Dork. Hmm. Okay, Grimner. Hmm. But I don't know, they're deleting stuff. They're doing all that egg heady tech stuff that I never follow very well. But one thing I did learn about the internet is how to open a link. And uh, I think Rob works. He's been sent. Well, he did send me a couple of things, and then he stopped. But he posted this article. I'm going to check how long it is. Might give me something to read for a few minutes. And it's part of the show, you know, a modern day guide. It's not going off astray off the topic. Not in my opinion. And let me get a um, sip of elixir and I'll be one second here, folks. Well, more like a guzzle of elixir, but um, anyway, so Rob Works posts some of the fun stuff that I find, political stuff, cop stuff, and uh, I don't guess I give him enough credit for that because, um, hmm. see, to me, they're so disappointing to see the cops beat the shit out of people and kill them and get caught for doing this and get caught for doing that. It's very disappointing. So I tend to not mention Rob puts up all that stuff because if you don't know, you should know. You got to see this. Uh, Mary had to. Mary Graham Z had to actually lose a childhood friend of her kids from the cops being over aggressive and actually murdering a kid she knew that grew up with her kids, and that changed her a little bit when she, you know, went through that period. That's my opinion, because uh, I know Mary a little bit. We've been friends for just a few years, but I got a grip on Mary, I think. Anyway, Mr. Rob Works had posted, uh, <laughs> I would I would suspect this was a, a dig at a certain bonehead, but it's called Newsflash to GOP. Socialism is already here and you helped it happen. March 6, 2019. And this thing hit all kinds of Facebook, Twitter, blah, 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 all the mainstream stuff. Oh, yeah, and Grimner puts us out on things like BitChute. I like BitChute. I found a lot of fun people over there to watch. Um, Spreaker, Spreaker's radio, it, they carry us. And he put us on... Uh, YouTube, of course, but YouTube's so weird. We can't make heads or tails of that anymore. Uh, we got new on to uh, iHeartRadio. I don't know how to use it, so it really hasn't done me any good, but at least I know that Grim put us there. And now I'm going to start my lengthy little thing here from Rob Works. And it says, By Bill... I hope I say this right. Bonner. <laughs> Golfin, Argentina. Mike Pence told the crowd at CPAC, Conservative Political Action Conference, that we will never be a socialist country. Hmm. What was that? A prediction or just political BS? Already, America's medical system, 17% of the economy, is largely socialized. So is the education system, another 7.3%. 
and its national pension system. Social Security is run by the feds and takes up about 5% of GDP. Hmm. Wait a minute. I thought that was money coming in. Well, yeah, they pay it out, but hey, did the scale tip and they got caught in their little game? Well, that's for another show. I will continue with Rob's little link. If you add in all the industries and activities that are required by the feds, or heavily controlled by them, the total comes to about half the GDP. How much of an economy do you have to socialize before you have a socialist country? <laughs> That's price. <laughs> Fifty percent should be enough, but apparently not. They haven't hit the magic point yet, Rob. Okay, sorry guys. Continuing with the link, we don't know, and we don't want to find out. <laughs> but we suspect the answer has something to do with another bit of political puffery at the conservative confab. Okay. Spin statistics. Donald J. Trump told CPAC attendees that the economy is booming like never before. He was right. <laughs> never in U.S. history has the economy performed so badly. <laughs> Fantasies are always much more appealing than truth, especially in politics, and you can spin statistics into almost any shape you want. But let's take a look. First, here is what most people believe, that the economy is growing strongly, unemployment is at a record low beyond full employment, Federal deficits don't matter. The government can print all the money at once. And the Fed is masterfully no twisting knobs and pulling levers to make sure that nothing ever goes wrong. Except it's all false. <sighs> wow, who ever thought? Urgent matter. In the first place, if the economy really were doing so well, why would the Fed pause its rate hikes instead of continuing its normalization program. It knows full well that there are still ups and downs in an economy. As recently as 10 years ago, the stock market got cut in half and the economy was headed for depression. The cause? Too much debt. <laughs> and now, <laughs> debt's levels are even higher. The Fed knows the next downturn will need to be fought with lower interest rates. But you can't cut interest rates if you don't have any interest rates to cut. <laughs> this is good, bro. This is getting to be an urgent matter. If it lasts until August, this recovery will be the longest ever recorded. Yes, it could go on forever. But... It is a bad bet. The bet, the Fed is going to need some rates to cut, and soon. In the last two downturns, the Fed lopped five percentage points off the federal funds rate each time. Even that was barely enough. The last recovery in which we were, we are at the tail end, is the weakest ever. Hmm. That's not what I read on the RLM chat. Anyway, GDP growth rates have been doing, going down for 40 years. Hey, <laughs> never mind. Smoothing them out by averaging them over a trailing 10-year period, we see the blazing hot rates in the 1960s and 1970s, around 4% and 3 0.5%. But now, over the last decade, average yearly growth rates have cooled to just 1.5%. Personal consumption rates give us a good idea of what is going on, too. People spend money when their real incomes are rising. In the 1970s, consumption spending rose about 12% per year. Now, personal consumption expenditures... <sighs> Growth averages only about 
unchanged from the uh, old boo-boo years. It's all Obama's fault. Thanks, Obama. Uh, hard to rig. Final sales are the other side of consumption. Those raw numbers are hard to rig. And they show the same thing. They've been in a downward trend since the 1970s. Did the tax cut of late 2017 reverse the trend? Not at all. Hold on one more sip. I'll be right with you. Oh, that's very tasty. From the year before, wait a minute. Hmm. No, from the year before the tax cut took effect to a year later, final sales rose only point <laughs> one percent. That is one tenth of one percent. A statistically insignificant move. Sounds beautiful. National savings, same thing, only worse. From the 10 to 12 percent range in the 1970s, the rate today stands at about 6.5 percent. Again, little changed and in the wrong direction from the Obama misfortune. The GDP growth rate for 2018 was virtually identical to the growth rate of 2015, about 2.9 percent. And the first two years of the Trump administration averaged together have seen almost the same GDP growth as the last two years of the Obama team, about 2.5%. Don't tell Hansel, he'll, his tumor will explode. And note that this was very expensive growth. The Trump team adds $100 billion per month to the nation's debt. This produces growth of only 40 billion a month. Right. Now we go to, well, this is a long, windy little fucker, isn't it? And ball and chain. Here, let me light up a cigarette so I can cough in the microphone while I'm reading and excite everybody all at the same time. On the campaign trail, Donald J. Trump had promised to pay off the national debt in eight years. <laughs> no one believed him, not even the candidate himself. By then, the national emergency follow, that followed the crash of 2009, making sure the elite didn't lose money on their investments, was over. The rich were back in high clover, but the Trump team simply picked up where Obama had left off and added another... Two trillion to the taxpayers' ball and chain. Together, Obama and Trump seem to have made the worst economic deal of all time. In 1930 to 1940 period, also known as the Great Depression, U.S. government debt increased from 17 billion to 43 billion, 26 billion dollar increase but it produced 300 billion dollars worth of real additional annual GDP in the 2008 to 2019 period real GDP increased only 3 trillion at a cost of 13 trillion of extra debt see now there's all this money talk on blown away but it's almost over folks give me three more lines in effect they socialize capitalism the elite speculate when there are losses they are dumped on the middle classes as debt regards bill bonner wow that was a pretty insightful little rant or was that just what everybody asked for the truth you know because where we're sitting in life, all these fancy numbers, they're impressive and all that shit. Cirque throws them around about the company she works for, and I, I laugh at that, too. She gets mad at me. But <laughs> I find it hard to believe billions of dollars. I mean, you can't even print billions of dollars. Hmm. But, see, that's where we got tricked, because... 
where does all this billions and trillions of dollars come into your life when you're just a normal person? See, it doesn't. So they use that shit to shut us up so we'll continue to do this ignorant shit we do and suffer in the meanwhile. While all the stuff that's good for us is against the law, all the stuff that's bad for you, well, if you... <laughs> If you stand in the right place, the government will find you and give you some of it. But <laughs> that's my opinion. I don't share the common man's outlook on the world. And that link was just another example of... You hear one story from this side of the uh, internet, and you hear this story from the other side of the internet. Whatever the hell it is. But... We've been uh, just like conditioned somehow to accept people need to be <laughs> dealt with according to their personal behavior, I think is the right way to put it. And uh, not that it's not a good thing, because that's how you survive in physical life. But in, you know, the word... In the typing and putting up links and making radio and all this other shit. Well, that's a little different than uh, an opinion. I think it carries a little bit better. Anyway, I'm just uh, trying to uh, find a way to explain this complex crap that's going on in my mind right now. Because what's going on is never what we're we're told. We're told a part of it, some of it about it but never whatever the truth is say we don't we can't even use that word when we talk to each other anymore because it's been cheapened and uh, you know what you expect out of somebody that you live with is a joke from somebody that you chat with and that i think maybe that's the idea i was trying to get at is how seriously some people take everything and then, like me, how not seriously somebody takes everything. <laughs> and typing, how the hell are you supposed to know what somebody, how they mean what they wrote? It, it, there's so much to, uh, to take in to make that decision. You can take it in any damn way you please at the moment. So I don't really, I don't take the typing too awful serious. But if you post a picture. And you're showing me like this excessive amount of freaking snow. And you're telling me, hey, it's really freaking cold here. I'll believe you more because you showed me the picture. And, you know, if you just talk a lot, maybe you're, you know, somewhere else. And you're not where you're really telling me you're at. <laughs> but not that pictures mean all that much to anybody. But to me, they do. I'm becoming very visual in my old days because uh, of all the verbal lies and the manipulations I saw and heard with my own eyes and ears. And every time you go, hey, that's not the way, nah, I don't see that. Shut up. Dub, dub, dub. Don't be a, you know, don't go against the grain here and cause trouble. That's what they always said to me. You cause trouble. Hmm. What did he do this time? Oh, he was making fun of Christopher Columbus, right? You know, because Christopher Columbus was, he was, uh, well, we got lied to about Christopher Columbus. Just take that for granted here at the moment. Maybe not for granted, but if you look it up yourself and insist on something other than the official record that you were brought up with and see what other people have to say about what Columbus truly did and who he truly was. It's not what we were told. And like usual, it's not pretty. <laughs> you know, I mean, you can't even find out what the truth about uh, Libya was. And here we are, what, 10 years later? It's not even that far ago. That far ago. Fargo, North Dakota. Anyway, it's not that long ago. I'm look, boy, that first hit just really 
Zap. I think I'll load me another pipe load and really get creative with English tonight. Hey, they're going about pussy power on the real liberty media dot com chat. It's probably a picture of a cat. I'm going to open it just to see if I don't blow up my computer, cowboy tech. And he put cat fight. Cha -cha. See, I knew. But I, I wanted to look at it. Uh, and the cat just falls over. Well, that's pretty good. Uh, thanks, Cowboy Tech. That was a good one. And I know you, so I figured it would be a cat. I don't... How do I mean? I know what to expect from you. That's what I mean. You have, uh, you know, limits. I re kind of respect that in uh, situations of society. You know, when people will like myself, go out of their way to have a limit when their history or their younger days didn't give a shit what you thought about fucking anything. <laughs> but see, as you get older, things change. And if you live and you continue and you keep living, then you kind of learn. You know, hey, the less shit I put out to people, why the less shit I get from people, this, this is quite interesting. I think I will follow this road, see where it might go. Anyway, so tonight in 20% uh, off, I was going on a modern day guide to what's really going on. And I was going to recommend links. I think the uh, Meet Your Straw Man was the number one. After that, I would say uh, look up. <laughs> The SCOTUS made a ruling some years back. The police have no duty to protect you. Huh. Think about that one. They protect you at their own discretion. Wow. Hmm. Now, most of these mental giants they have in police work, well, they can't spell discretion, but they're going to use it just as soon as they figure out what it means. Same as the Polish army, because there's a lot of things about the Obama administration people don't know. And one of them was uh, Joe Biden had this uh, surplus of septic tanks he was stuck with in Wyoming. So he found this Polish billionaire and he talked him into buying them all. And as soon as that Polish billionaire figures out how to drive them, He's going to invade Russia. Nah, I'm just kidding. That was a Polak joke. Just felt in a mood to be sarcastical. Anyway. Hmm. Grimner's writing up on the uh, posting tonight. Peace. The absence of war <laughs> or other hostilities. People don't... They don't take... The financial punishments that the government does hurts everybody concerned, all of us equally. Because when you rob Peter to pay Paul, <clears throat> where does the money come from in the first? Wow. You're robbing pretend money to pretend to pay somebody to pretend to do and pretend and pretend and pretend. And it got out of hand in the... Now the the planes are armed with live ammunition, bombs. They send young teenage men, you know, men and women, teenage years. Because if you're old enough to travel across the world, you're not a kid anymore. You know, and they talk these kids into uh, giving up their freedom to go do something despicable because it's fun. And it's um, financially rewarding because they'll get a paycheck when they get back. You know, if they get back or... I don't know how these poor guys end up broke. You know, they go to another place. Their um, needs are all met, but they still find ways to find debt. I, I haven't quite figured that part out. But I don't talk to people on that particular of a of a level of finance, even when I was or hanging around the military kids, I didn't ask them any of that. But, you know, they had money to drink, but they didn't have money to buy cars and planes and boats and yachts and 
all that kind of crap. But so anyway, these kids come back from across the sea and whatnot, and they're in pieces. And the government just eventually turns their back on them and says, "No, we're not helping you." Hmm. Uh, I don't know. I guess there's a little um, unfairness in any job, <laughs> no matter what it is. Uh, yeah, Polish Army. I yeah, thanks, Grim. I wasn't sure if that was funny, <laughs> the Polacks. But who, you know, because Cirque's Danish, so she picks on the Polacks. She's a what do you call it? Oh, a white supremacist. She's glow in the dark white. <laughs> <laughs> she, she thinks you people think you're white <laughs> you're not white you're european <laughs> so her her outlook on america is so different than the outlook of america by america it's day and night <laughs> grimner says that's an army i could get behind hey think about this right if if iraq goes back and goes to war with iran do you think that the Turks would get in there and invade our Iraq from the rear? <laughs> Helping the Iranians? <laughs> now, there's American bases all over the whole Iran border. I, I've seen maps anyway. I haven't been there. Don't want to go to the Middle East. The Middle East doesn't entice me. I like the... I like where I'm at. The Scandinavian thing's pretty good. And the more people complain about how bad certain places are, the more I've learned to not believe that the place is all that bad. Now, Sweden is just across the bridge from Copenhagen. And uh, when the refugees were coming in, I don't know, a year or two back or something, they were coming here to Denmark and the... The Swedes were offering more money than the Danes were. The Danes were telling them, if you got personal shit, we're going to take it from you. Yeah, you want to come here for aid, prove you don't need aid first. And the people would go, hey, can, can you give us a ride to Sweden? And the Danes were offering, offering them rides over to Sweden to get rid of them out of Denmark. And according to the police, they weren't breaking any laws, technically, but they weren't supposed to do it. But everybody was in agreement, so, yeah, get them out of here. And, wow, what a fucking white place I ended up in, I'm telling you. Because hearing it, it sounds terrible. You know? But living in it, they have that protect your homeland and... You know, marrying your own kind of race kind of thing, which sort of kind of broke. But uh, I guess to put it in so many words, Eng England and America, you know, the Western places, we have a, a higher standing socially, you know, in that state shit. We get accepted easier because of where we're from. Doesn't that matter, at, you know, first, if, if you're an idiot or a moron, You'll fuck up and show yourself eventually. So they're not worried so much about that. But the, this, the status of that American passport in the paper world. And it's something to gloat about on one hand. And on another hand, it's like, wow, what a, you know, what a fucking game this whole thing is. America's more corrupt than most of these European shitholes are. It's like, the more successful you are, the less likely you're not a thief and liar. I've I've seldom, I don't know, here we go with opinion, but I worked for everything I've got. No, you didn't. And everybody will say that. Anybody with a job, I worked for every penny I ever. No, you didn't. That's just what we're taught to say. <laughs> It sounded better the, than the truth. You know, the truth will get you. Wow, the truth can get you so fucked up with people that you might not recover from telling them the truth. Mm. Oh, what other gems, speaking of links, that I would recommend? Uh, I did a just a random search on a like a, a 
Google entry, and it wasn't Google, I think Firefox or whatever browser I had that day. And all I did was typed in fluoride. And in one link, the very first link I open, I find out that it's a byproduct of a manufacturing waste, blah, 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 blah. They used to buy it from Florida domestically. Hold on a second here. Now I got a little uh, raspiness going on in my throat. That was what the tea was for. And I think it's doing its job so it can be all gravelly and sound like Grimner talking tonight. But anyway, so where was I? Um, yeah, fluoride. And the, the details of the link were so depressing that it got worse from the beginning, beginning of the fluoridation, right? So they've been exposed as poisoning us with it, yet now they get their fluoride from China, and that fluoride has arsenic in it as well as fluoride. So, I mean, these are, are not lethal level, levels of this poison. But they're enough to, to do slow damage over years and years of time. I wonder how much of it's got to do with Rockefeller medicine. It weakens your immune system, probably. I'm guessing on that one, but by the results of the people that I have seen do the bulk of the complaining <laughs> over the years I've been you know, alive, um, hmm. I don't know, it strikes me as the... The wilder, freer people gave two flying shits about the politics in life. And the people that did all the caring about all the politics were the ones trying to hang on to their hoard and not lose their money. <laughs> and hmm. once I found out about, now here's another link besides fluoride, look up fractional reserve banking you can find that in modern money mechanics if you're a book reader uh, probably find a link i've seen links on it and it'll explain the federal reserve bank in like five minutes and once you see uh, well then again maybe it's not you but once i saw how this magic trick is performed and how like train seals we just sit there and let them hand us fish it's it's almost embarrassing. I mean, now, fortunately me, fortunately for me, my partner knows what I know. And we share the same opinion about Mother State. So there's none of that. But, honey, we own this house and we're this and then we're, no, we, we rent it from a bank or a, a financial service, whatever you call it. It's a little bit less, uh, what do you call it? They don't work so hard to hear to take your shit away from you. They try to find ways to keep you in your home. But in other countries I've lived in, boy, man, when the bank smells a little bit of a default coming on, they try to push it, get you out of that place so they can lock it up so nobody can live in it read there's like uh, I don't know six houses for every person that's homeless there's six empty houses this is horrible numbers I'm not probably exaggerating it but let me go on with the links I would recommend to find out what a modern day guide to what is really going on looks like and let's see fractional reserve banking is definitely a must in the you know, seeking out what the hell's happening in the world. What else? Anybody got any ideas I missed if you're paying attention? Because we have a lot of brainiac people on the real liberty media dot com chat that know all this crap. You know, that you're just preaching to the choir to some of these folks who've been around longer than me. Longer than most. Blah 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 blah. But Internet didn't start doing anything with this for till about the last, what, 12, 14 years. And I came in late. I didn't get to the Internet until, oh, I was playing on games on it for a few years. But I didn't start using it as a tool to learn until 
uh, after my birthday in uh, 2011, somewhere before the new year came, kicked in. And uh, my just the things that I learned when I started have opened the doors to other things. You know, Diary of an Economic Hitman was a nice find. And <laughs> it's not that I don't believe the story the guy tells. The problem I have with him is he talks about it so openly and nobody seems to do anything to stop him. And the world I'm from, if if you're telling the truth, you usually end up quiet somewhere in a hole. And here's this guy's been talking about being an economic hitman for the United States government. And da 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 So I think that the government doesn't give a shit what the public knows anymore. You can vote until your eyes bleed. You're not changing shit. All you're going to change is the color of the skin of the suit that you were looking at, but the the mouth running it, that body, that greasy, shitty POTUS you're looking at, it's going to be the same bitch that the other one was. Nothing's going to ever get better if we keep approaching the problem using the same crap tools that we've always used. Those don't work. So go back in time a few hundred years. What do they recommend? Well, we gave you a republic. Hello. We gave you a republic if you can keep it. And apparently they call it a democracy now. So you didn't keep it. The state. Here we go with state. This is why I have no respect for any of this shit. In America, when I was growing up, when I was a young kid, I understood that state had the rights to do with you what they wanted fed that was for criminals and criminals and all this imaginary shit you see on tv it wasn't really real you're never gonna meet an fbi agent and here we are in 2019 and average joe believes that the fed trumps the state and the fed can tell the state what to do and this that and the other and blah 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 blah, blah. So people have given up legally through lies and deceit, basically. They've given up all the things that were, you know, protected for them by the government. They were tricked out of them. Now they don't have them anymore. And they, they don't seem as a whole to be able to face the reality. You don't have any freedom anymore. You're a victim of your own government. And there's there's a link about, I can't remember the movie it's out of, but it's like a short link about a 10-year-old kid giving this old man grief about state. And I know I have it on my, um, what do you call that, YouTube uh, history. So before I'm done tonight, I'm going to try to open up my YouTube history and catch this um, link that I've got. It's about an old movie, 10-year-old kid yakking at this older man about uh, politics. Now, the problem I have is, man, I screw this computer up. Every time I touch it, I do something that does something wrong. I can't even hit my mute button half the time when I get one of those, you know, <laughs> marijuana coughs come over me. You know, when you take that hit and it feels okay, and then you start talking and then, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Crap. And I do that sometimes. And Beetle calls me rude. But, hey, you know, this is what you get when you don't have to pay for your radio programs. Now, if you're one of those folks that's out there and you, you know, support the site and you pay for it. And you don't like my show, well, you can not listen to the show. I'm not holding anybody captive. <laughs> Even though I'd like to sometimes. Uh, could have big numbers and look like I'm really important. Anyway, I'm digging. Th I played a shitload of music today, too. Oops. I went all um, rock and roll. I finished my puzzle. Take a minute to brag about that. And, uh, well, okay, not a few minutes. It was a few hours. So I, I was hair week. No, no, that's John Perkins, the guy I was talking about. Wow, I got to really dig for this link. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Anyway, uh, 
I was just stalling, thinking I could find it. Well, there's a horrible movie I was watching. I found the worst movie ever made called Butt Crack. <laughs> anyway, let me see if I can't find this kid's link. Ah, might be on uh, Minds.com. And, uh, yeah, if any of you go over there to the Minds.com, I use uh, Minds.com. I flash somebody over at Minds.com. You know why? Because that way you know who I am. <laughs> if you go over to Minds.com, you can go, Hey, what if that dark flash is here? And you'd be amazed, because you know what? Sometimes I'm there. Anyway, I know I've got it somewhere, and I really wanted to post it. But, like usual, I don't do uh, like homework and prepare for the show. I write something down and hope I can find the note when I need it. <laughs> Uh, I like to do these uh, radio things as kind of as natural as it can because plans, uh, they're all nice and wonderful, but they don't always work out so good. I've made a lot of plans that didn't go the way I thought they were going to go. And then, like this Denmark thing, I didn't make any plans. It just, hey, what's going on here? Let's take a look. And uh, here I am. And I got a ton of links on... Uh, <laughs> on well, minds.com that well, I got a page going on here and I'm looking for one particular link I probably didn't copy in, to my page I should have but I tend to screw things up when I don't really mean to <laughs> I can't find it anyway there's a plenty of other things that I would consider um Important to look into if if you're trying to find your way through the politics. And there's so many things. I don't know. How old? Let's see. How old would an average... Let me go to the chat and see what I can't find going on talking here. I um, wonder how old the average person looking for an answer today would be. What, 30? I don't even know. I don't think the kids would be too... Day. I wasn't interested in politics and... When I was a teenager, crying out loud, I was too busy living. Ah, Van Meter told me, Charlie Chaplin movie. Uh, yeah, I just opened up the chat right now. She said that way back at, no, before the hour. Oh, no, that was just a few minutes ago. Okay. Uh, my clock runs a little fast here. But I think she said that about three minutes back. So thanks a lot there, uh, Donna for figuring that one out because I have this real um, learning like a like a disability where when I need something I can't find it <laughs> and when I don't need to know it that's the time to ask me like when we play trivia all the common stuff that nah, everybody can answer in four seconds nah but they get these really bizarre weird obscure shit questions and once in a while they go hey how'd you know that Sometimes I can tell by the way the question's written what the answer is. Not always, but once in a while. And I like to play fast like the rest of you, so sometimes I guess and hit the nail on the head because it was the only answer I knew at the time. Anyway, meanwhile, back at a modern-day guide to what is really going on, uh, I wonder what the criteria is mentally to give a flying shit about what's going on in the world in the first place. You know? Oh, and here we go. Let's debate this for a second. Um, free everything for everybody. Why not? Right. Uh, Frumpy says, uh, he's on HWR on the RLM chat. And, uh, well, See, this is the problem that we've all got. We've been raised with all this competition and survival and stuff and billionaires and rich people have and work hard, all this crap. Well, if five people have enough resources to feed and fe clothe the entire planet and shelter them, why? <laughs> there's, your, there's your answer right there. People are too stupid. Stupid to realize that that form of life is not necessary. 
so what they've done is they farmed us out to these different countries over generations, hundreds and hundreds. This plan took a long time to get where it is now. And the stuff that they tell us that they're looking to do to us in the future, they're doing it. <laughs> Inoculations was a great beginning. Um, oh, here was my favorite. Women, and when I was growing up, I was a child of the 60s, baby. My mom stayed home and raised me. Didn't have to work. My dad did all the work. He brought home enough money to support everybody. We all had what we needed and toys to play with and a house to live in. And a mom to cook and take care of us, teach us how to do these things for herself as we were growing up. Hell, I was cooking dinner for the family when I was 11. And it was a... Uh, it was like a privilege. It wasn't like a task. Oh, you want to cook, huh? Well, no. You know, so they outsmarted me and made me, made me, again. They made me want to do a task, made it seem important so I'd want to learn how to do it. Instead of burden me with a, well, you have to do this or we'll send you to prison, you know, or whatever parents said to people. Uh, now, I've mentioned on the radio, my father wasn't one to ask, but my father wasn't one that did the cooking. So, my mother's approach was a little bit kinder. But, from a very early age, I learned how to do all the things to maintain my own shit. I could wash my own clothes. I could cook my own some food if I wanted to. You know, I wasn't stopped from, oh, you're not old enough to do that. You know, and then <laughs> a few years of strife, but by the time I was about 14, there was no more um, begging to go out. It was, I'll see you guys, I'll be back tomorrow, because, hmm, well, I got to this certain point at that age where, I, that's it, I, I was already grown up. People just accepted it instead of arguing with me about it. <laughs> Looking back, they they just gave in and figured that if I could pull it off in society, I deserved to be there. And when I was 14, I was hanging out with teenagers and adults, and everybody knew how old I was. I didn't bother anyone. We weren't doing any liquor drinking in bars or any of that crap that uh, was... Uh, a big deal for teenagers to do when I was young. I wasn't interested in that. I wanted to be at the pizza parlor when they were making the, the pot pizza late at night after they shut the place down. So you had to get tight with these other guys. And if you, you know, if you weren't mature enough to, to deal with them, then you couldn't do it. Excuse me. And, you know, at 14, most people's biggest problem was uh, a math test or f this some girl at school or some crap like that. And me, I was trying to figure out ways to join this older teenage kind of group. And, and I found a way to do it. And like usual, I don't know what the fuck I do with people, but they tolerated me. And I was a lot younger than in it. And if you remember your teenage years... A 16, 17, 18-year-old didn't really want to be around somebody that was younger than them because they usually acted like dicks. They d didn't have it, couldn't pull it off. They were still developing that social crap. And I got learned, you know. They taught me and stuffed it down my throat at such an early age that it seemed to work. And in one way, it backfired because it pushed me away from the society because I liked the outlaw life better. The outlaws seemed to have all the fun. And all those straight-laced bankers and their, you know, shiny shoes and their straight ugh, ties around their throat and all that. I, 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 I thought, well, I guess you can hang yourself at the end of the day if you don't make any money, huh? What a job. Lovely. You uh, <laughs> know, I, I didn't... I didn't pursue education. Now, the reason I tell these little things are <laughs> because my my personal 
growth and development was so different than anybody else had ever talked to about it. Uh, they went to school and they did the things they were expected to do until they were, you know, old enough to not do it. And I took off a long time before that and said, no, you people are trying to kill me. I want to get away from you. And looking back, wow, they were too. And I think they inoculated me with something. I don't remember what it was, but I think back in like 65 or 66, because if it was after that, I think I'd remember being shot at a school. No, uh, I had a few hospitals that, you know, I'd visited as a child for injury and whatnot, but nothing, nothing I remember about inoculations. And <laughs> wow, I'm not allergic to anything except maybe currency, uh, work, mm, idiots, and stupid people. Because there's a lot of smart fucking people that are just dumb as a brick, you know. If they had to cook their own eggs, they'd go hungry. So pampered and taken care of in life. But, well, average Joe might work for these fuckers, but he never actually socializes with them. So we're kind of lucky on that respect. But, you know, just being alive in this time in, in life and not knowing that the food and the water are tainted. Hemp is a miracle freaking plant that you could make anything that you can think of out of it. But it's against the law to make it, to use it. Now the release, <laughs> these fuckers are great. I saw Levi's ad today. I about threw up. Levi started out using hemp in the first fucking place. They made sales, and I read stories about original pair of denim pants. They'd still survive now. They were so hard, you know, the, the wear, the life of them. They'd last a hundred fucking years if you wore them every day. And this is the rumors and stuff that I read. Now, today I read an, uh, an advertisement for modern new... <laughs> new hemp just like cotton and if you knew anything about how cotton is manufactured into uh, fabric it's one of the filthiest freaking businesses there is cotton is a nasty dirty thing but hemp not so much and see they replaced hemp with cotton <laughs> so now they're going to replace cotton with hemp and the same freaking people that owned the company in the first place are still the ones that own the company now. So what changed, really? See, this is what I mean about it. We get um, we get told these stories and, oh, you can work hard and invest your money and be something. And then you find out that, no, you can't. What the government doesn't take from you, the life will, you know, because they just, well, hold on. You know, like uh, using cash. When I was a child, a quarter, I had a quarter when I was eight years old. I had money. I could go to the grocery store and load up and get me my goodies and have change when I left. Take the refund, the bottle back for a refund when I was done. Now, now, you give a kid five bucks and then look at you like, what? What am I going to get with this? An IOU on a Big Mac? <laughs> Here's my five dollars. Oh, no, no, that's not enough. Go get more money. <sighs> oh. See, and as we've aged, everything, all these prices went up 500, 600%. Right, <laughs> but the, the the living wage because of the taxes that eat it up before you ever touch it, you get fucked. Oh, here we are, you know. And I say these things because they're really the truth. You know what what we get told is just a fraction. If 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 any of it is actually real, the part that's real doesn't affect you what it affects is the bottom line of the guy that owns the company that you're buying the shit from so what what we have in the 21st century is the internet now 
I'm experimenting with the internet today <laughs> because I have a problem believing that a certain member of our community is actually a human being. So, I challenge that human being. Show me some proof. You talk and you brag and you this and you that. All I want you to do is prove one thing. <laughs> so, because I'm such a smart ass with this other character and I'm pushing him around with all this nonsense, I thought I'd talk about it on the radio and just make the, you know, make the wound a little worse. Pour a little salt in it, cake him a little bit. <laughs> but all it would take to stop me, I'm never going to be friendly with you, but all it would take you know, to stop me, my boycott, is just prove you're real. You know, just like Israel. If Israel would prove it's real to me in any fucking way whatsoever, I would not hold the feelings I have for it. It's a fraud. It's a fiction. It's a monster that destroys everything in its path, just like every other fucking country that exists. Uh, and the proof is in the pudding. Look at the results of this collective fucking life. We're burning oil and using second-rate electricity. They're poisoning the food. <laughs> Monsanto got to us. They got through and through the courts. Uh, the courts just manipulated common sense and just did whatever Monsanto wanted them to do. And who do you fight with when a, a legal system makes a judgment on a legal matter? <laughs> when you can appeal. <laughs> well, you know, did it ever occur to the person appealing that the appealer was expecting you? <laughs> they knew you are going to appeal. Oh, they're talking about a Miss Kate's on there about a new case or a presently on the interwebs case somebody gets 47 months well 47 months in a club fed probably let's see what's the crime oh i don't know i can't follow on this so i'm trying and to do a show at the same time i'm multitasking in my own special way uh, weather dork <laughs> that's too funny thanks grim anyway <clears throat> Ah, Trump's ex-campaign manager, Manafort, given 47 months in prison. Oh, well, isn't he special? Hmm. How many felonies do you need to run for president now anyway? What is it, three, four? <laughs> I remember, uh, <laughs> I was... Making sure some people knew that uh, Donald Trump is like the bankruptcy king of the Western world. I, I don't know. I can't keep track. He's either got three passed and one working, or he's got four passed. But four bankruptcies. <laughs> this guy knows how to beat you out of your dough. Man, is he good in the Trump University scheme? Wow. And he's dealing in these amounts of money that are, they're so astronomical by the time he pays off the fine, he still made profit off the original crime he did. This game is huge and these people are, they're all in a group, in a team and shit and they're pretending to be enemies and we're, we're believing it. <laughs> Pelosi and Trump probably blow the same cat. Don't. You know, there's no difference. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they don't blow a cat, but whatever they do, they probably do it together. Clothes are probably optional. And in either of their case, they should really stay dressed. <clears throat> but that's, that again, maybe that's for uh, me and Vinny to discuss on the dork table on Saturday. <laughs> Let's see, where were we? Well, Miss Kate seems to be saying he won't need a pardon for that fu Okay, four years? Well, now, what do you do, 50%? I don't even know what the rules of engagement with the state are regarding... Uh, well, it's not even the state, it's the Fed. It's the state state. Wait. State... <laughs> so fucking ridiculous. 
you know, <laughs> this group of dickheads punishes you again for the crime because, well, you crossed that border, that imaginary line right there. See it? <laughs> It would be so much easier to raise good people than the way they they do this. They raise, look what they raise. <laughs> oh, God. There's a group for everything. Are you a club-footed lesbian with a lisp? Do you find dating difficult? Join our site. <laughs> we'll help you for a nominal fee. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, they're really into the conversation on the chat room about this uh, Manor. What's his name? Manafort. My name is Wilbur Manafort, and I earned every dollar I got by God and country. I never did anything wrong to anybody. I will appeal this conviction. Justice will be served. <laughs> they say the, oh, the same shit. For how many years have we been hearing this nonsense? Since I was old enough to understand what it meant, <laughs> I've, been he I've been hearing this is going to happen and that's going to happen and da da da. And the only constant in my entire life is the, well, we've hit the slimy depths of moral depravity and human degradation in our society without stopping <laughs> nobody even wanted to slow down and look they just went okay let's do that <laughs> let's give these people rats too they won't explain that they don't mean anything to you so you're out there like a dumbass being special <laughs> With your special rights that you got from the government. <laughs> and, wow. And if you don't even speak the same language and shit, get along. I don't, I don't know how they pull this off. I did read once that in California when I was living there in uh, 2000 and maybe one or 2000, you couldn't even get a job working for the state of California unless you spoke Espanol. So, hmm. can you imagine how people felt when they saw that? Oh, I wonder how they're going to feel when they see it in the future. Mm -hmm. I wonder what the future holds, huh? Hmm. Well, so far, the way the past went, the future's not looking too good. You know, and you have all these things like, uh, well, I'm not a big fan of, <laughs> you can all hate me for this one, but space exploration. And you know what? They can't even build a freaking system of roads on this planet. Well, how the fuck are they going to ever explain to me how are they going to get it off the planet if they can't do anything right on this one? They're still drilling for freaking oil like a bunch of idiots. There's an alternative to that. <laughs> I got a LOL out of Rob, but I have no idea what I said because uh, the uh, radio's in the, the chat's not on the same time length. There's a delay, just enough of a delay where I forget what the hell I just said any damn way and go on to the next whatever the hell I got on my mind. And uh, and then I read somebody laugh, so I, I got a giggle out of something. Yay! You know, because, wow, we, life's too short for uh, all this neg... Well, what would you call it? Yeah, negative. I would say I've learned that from my my wife. Uh, me and Cirque are worlds apart, you know. Uh, I don't know. In some respects, like uh, personality traits, our core thinking is very similar as the attraction, but the expression of shit. She knits, I draw. You know, she paints, I put puzzles together, whatever. We do opposite, different things. And then there's some things we're similar at, but they're still, wow, well, worlds apart just because of uh, just life, I suppose. And. I think we've 
probably survive this far by uh, hanging on to the similarities and overlooking the complete oppositeness. <laughs> like tonight, she had to go to work tomorrow. So I had to chase her out of the damn room because if I don't, she'll stay down here and she'll giggle with me and we'll play around. And then she won't get enough sleep and she feels like shit the next day going to do a day's job. She had to go to work tomorrow. So I had to tell her, go to bed, honey. Be a good girl and don't make yourself all crazy. <laughs> but if that was me, I'd mind your own fucking business. Tell me what to do. <laughs> If I want to go to work tired tomorrow, I will. Don't tell me what to do. And, but see, that's what I mean. She knows that I'm only doing that because I'm looking out for her. And I would know if she did that to me, she'd be looking out for me. But I don't have a lot of experience with with being depending on somebody else to tell me anything. I've been pretty independent for the most of it. And <laughs> this marriage thing is really different. Because uh, I've been single for a long time. I got married young and I got divorced young. And then I got remarried in my 30s and I got divorced again. It, me and marriage did not do very well. And I gave it up and then I met Cirque and went, mm. Okay, <laughs> let's let's see what happens with this shit. What the fuck? What the fuck can go wrong in in my life now? <laughs> no, I didn't think that, but it's funny to say it today. <clears throat> but the the journey that I took to get where I'm at in life, it's so singular. There's not a lot of people I can talk to that have the same experience. Mm. Then I read things like, or I've talked to people uh, here in Denmark. No, I've got a police record and I can't go to America, blah, 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 because of. And they tell me all the other countries they can go visit, but America, no. <laughs> and and this is the, the same country that has uh, an immigration problem. <laughs> But it seems like if you do it, you know, the proper legal way, they don't really want anybody coming there. <laughs> the requirements to visit are more stringent than the requirements to be born and live there. You know, you can come out in the womb with a machete and probably kill half the people in your uh, hospital room. And they won't throw you out of the country. <laughs> I might name a hospital after you or something. I don't know. I, I'm getting dingy. It's 1 and 20 in the a.m. out here in Daneland where I reside at this time in my day. And I'm living in your future, so you should be riding about 7 and 20 in the evening if you're on the East Coast. <laughs> Give or take. I don't know. I was just making up a random number because I felt like it. Let me look at my notes, because tonight on A Modern Guide, A Modern Day Guide to What is Really Going On, hmm, I think what's really going on overall, above everything else, is this fucking obsession that we've been indoctrinated to believe that we all have to agree, 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 agree. It's the most important thing in life. If you don't agree... Oh, people are going to talk about you. You know what they're going to say? They're going to say, you don't agree. Are you a communist? <laughs> are, are you an agent of a foreign government? <laughs> what are you trying to get from me, Mr. Disagreeable? And <laughs> that's life, man. We're We're stuck there. And then like the cops in the states hmm. when i compare i guess my daily life now to the some of the cities i lived in and the, sh and the shit that i did and saw done and whatnot and there's still ain't gonna tell i've never seen a 
live bank robbery, never saw anybody shoot or stab anyone in my presence. So all the stuff that I saw in life was, no matter how bad it was, it was no damn made-for-TV movie, you know, that's going to change your life. <laughs> I just had a, you know, travel kind of thing where I met a lot of people and some of the people that I met in life were, what would you say, um, they thought outside of the normal, whatever was going on. And those were the, those are people I kind of leaned into. And I saw somebody comment about how useless old people are. And it might have been a joke earlier this morning on when I got up today. And it might have been a, you know, a kind of a crack or something, but it slapped me and I thought, wow, you know, it was the old people that guided me to where I was going so that I wouldn't have to suffer, the, you know, the way everybody else was suffering. Because, geez, all, and still, I mean, I hear people complain about things that uh, don't affect me. So they're distant, like, wow, Moose's weather. Wow, she's one, one piece to off a little Moose girl, you know, there in the Wisconsin. Every time the snow stops, they give her two days without it, and then they go, hey, guess what? You're going to get another foot of snow. And you know what? It's going to come in eight hours. <laughs> get ready. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> so I can understand the disappointment and uh, working the same freaking, hey, wait a minute. Didn't we just do this the other day for months? <laughs> it's uh, People, you know, they give up. They don't want to do it. And they get lazy and they get desperate and crack. Some people get violent. And I'm not saying Moose is going to get violent. I'm just saying that, you know, the wrong people under these harsh, extreme weather circumstances are probably just doing all kinds of horrible things to their families out there. You know, and there's a fair share of it because, you know, I mean, if you're living in that kind of horrible, extreme, and you're dependent on medicine or food or whatever have you, and you don't get it, whoops, there goes your mentality right down the toilet. You know, because, I, I, man, I'm a movie buff. I've been watching movies all my life. And the one thing I've never seen anybody threaten anybody with is silence. You know, you've seen it all. They're going to shoot you. They're going to stab you. They're going to tie you up and do all these horrible things. And nobody just ever thinks of locking you in a room until you're thirsty or hungry enough to tell them whatever they want to know you know you don't have to punish people on top of that their deprivation they use it on us in society in subtle ways shortages uh, high prices for things that are better than other things so that poor people can't afford those things that kind of crap you know so the this guy can make a, a lot of money and his underlings can get 7% to fight over. But that's the system we got. And this is what I, I get so disappointed about is <laughs> like a handful of people have 97% of the wealth. And the rest of us monkeys are down here shitting around trying to scrounge up some little bit of the 7% that's left for us to divide up. And it doesn't go very far. And this doesn't include what the government spends. I mean, people that actually do trading, do labor for cash, for currency, for IOUs, for whatever you call it. And then there's people that sit on their ass and own things. And because, you know, they work so hard to own that, that they deserve four or $500,000 a year just because, hey, huh. They own it. <laughs> so, see, what what I grew up thinking is, wait a minute. If I want a potato, how is the banker going to get me a potato? Don't I need a farmer to grow one? <laughs> see, you know, all these things have been hijacked and conglomerated and grown and managed and built and expanded and improved and now that potato that you could have 
grew in your backyard probably well you get to go get the one they poisoned down at the grocery store yeah and they're open about it too glyphosate is good for you it's boy this is more natural than natural you just join the 21st century did i get booted off the rlm chat or did everybody just stop chatting let me give it a test because i'm doing this show at a weird time Uh, i'm gonna say is there anyone there and see if i get a response because well like i said it's 1 and 30 in the morning almost out here in denmark and i decided to do this show late because well i don't know wanted to give it a try May not have been my smartest decision in the timing area. Oh, I got a weather dork comment. Because I had to type in there. Is anybody there? Nobody's saying much. They're abandoning me in my time of radio. (laughs) Robots. Oh, yeah. You guys are going to have robots. And you already got automated shit in grocery stores. And They had all that when I was there. In uh, Kirkwall, too, when I got to Kirkwall in uh, 12. I think, no, maybe it was after 12. I think they brought it in the uh, last year I was actually there, 13, 14. And, yeah, you could go to the grocery store and put your things through the machine and all that crap. Well, no, I'm old that's not my job. That's not what I'm going to do. <laughs> I don't know. Nobody was chatting, so I got lonely. <laughs> testy wood. Too testy. Okay, we got Grimner. We got Van Meter out there. And uh, that's good. I don't, I wasn't too worried about the chat because uh, there's people on BitSheet that pick this show up in the repeat. You know, because uh, I get more of a crowd than there is people on here on uh, Real Liberty Media. And I know there's not a lot of folks that I attract on the Real Liberty Media anyway. Hmm. I think, man, uh, me and Vincent has successfully split the room of listeners into half. (laughs) Because uh, well, me and Vinny have this ongoing disagreement about uh, the society, the ease society, and then applying the uh, physical society rules to the ease society. And in some respects, uh, to me, the uh, the expectations of, uh, of freedom don't exist in the electronic world. Because uh, some people push the boundaries too far. Now, I might be one of those people with my attempt to boycott a, you know, a fictitious name that I don't recognize as a person. And if that's causing somebody some problems, I I hope it's not. All I just want to see a link. <laughs> I'm desperate now. <laughs> I'm going to start holding hostages. Maybe overthrow some foreign government, throw a coup d'etat, have some fun. Nah, I'm just, I'm just fucking around. <clears throat> but, you know, you get these um, moments where power can go to your mind and take you over. And you want to do all these things. <laughs> and it takes a few minutes to come back to Earth and remember it's all an illusion. I mean, Jesus fucking Christ. If there's... Hold on one second. You know, if there's anything that people can type at you that could persuade you to see things in a certain fashion that you don't want to, hmm, I would be weary of that, I think. Hmm. Then on the other hand, you know, we have people who are argumentative, like myself. I, I'm i a very argumentative person. I start fights all the time on the Real Liberty Media. That's what I do with my friends. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I guess it's just one of those sensitive um, 
late night moments where I, I feel people don't really mean half of what they say they do. We're just free to do a line of shit that we shouldn't do and we take advantage. That might be a better way to put it. Because, you know, we all have strong opinions about things that to one guy don't mean shit and to the next guy knocks him in the head. Hey, you can't talk about Trump like that. <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> I just can't shoot him. But I can talk. Talk shit. Blah, 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 blah. That doesn't mean anything. You just can't physically threaten or verbally threaten to do. That's insanity. But to not like somebody, that's a... That's a freedom of choice right there. You know, and society's been trying to... What is that right word for it? Um, when you are when you want the decorum to be a certain way, they want, uh, they want to mandate things that can't be controlled by the forms of uh, force they use. If you want people to be nice to you, uh, my experience is the best way to do that is to be nice to them first. And if they're not nice back, fuck them. There you go. You learned a lesson for the price of a beer or a cup of coffee or a smile or a hello or whatever your investment into the hello is. And uh, so a lot of people are just terrified of interacting, uh, being their self, who they really are. Because... I think basically we're all a bunch just boring slobs that, you know, big deal. I did what you did, blah, 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 you know, and all. Uh, I don't think I'm trying to compare as much as I am. I'm amazed I survived what I did. <laughs> but crack, yeah, I found a movie. <laughs> well, I tell Cirque all the time. I'm looking for the worst hundred films ever made on YouTube, and they're free. And and <laughs> Grimner posted it. it. It's absolute rubbish, and that's what I mean. When I'm doing my puzzle, I don't want something intelligent that I'm gonna miss. So I play crap. So you know, I'm alone. I don't want you know, the dogs here. And a pitch quiet house would just be horrible. And music tends to make me pay more attention to the music, so I try to find, <laughs> like, butt crack. <laughs> that is so bad. Mm. I've seen some dogs in my day, too, but butt crack was horrible. I'm trying to, yeah, 100 worst films ever made. I think I'll start writing them down <laughs> and make a list. Don't let this happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow a thousand lockups a day what is that lookups a day what is that i'm gonna open up what grim posted yeah we're on the last bit of the show so i don't know if, if i gave a lot of information if you took the time to do the links oh and death by medicine holy crying out loud uh and grim as well as done links on uh, baking soda. I'm not even going to mention what the point of it is. Just baking soda. If you don't know what baking soda is, why don't you do a little looking for yourself and see what the computer takes you to because uh, baking soda is an incredible uh, chemical that it's cheap, it's available, and it's abundant. There's plenty of it. And it's very helpful. You know, and this is a big planet, whatever it is, flat, round, square, whatever the fuck we're on, it's big. And we've been controlled and not, we do not understand how much room there is. <laughs> They're trying to convince you that they're flying all over the freaking planet, destroying everything with chemical trails, right? Well, if that is indeed true, because it seems to me they're doing some kind of damage or some kind of interference... Well, then why isn't the reverse just as possible as the problems that they're given? Could it be because we don't group, you know, we don't form groups and say, hey, no, I'm going to put up with this crap. You know, don't even demand the truth out of anybody. We just take blindly the, the government 
mandates you get an inoculation for months. And I saw a link about a woman that supposedly her kid got mumps and survived without an inoculation. Go figure. And that's because the truth about mumps is this childhood disease helps you build your immune system. But we've been conned and bullied and tortured and threatened and lied to. So all these smart people are running around repeating the lies of the educated <laughs> the fucking wealthy and all these politician scumbags and their fucking lawyers. Yeah, I know, that's no way to talk about, you know, the the man, man, but wow. How much of this shit are people expected to take before they actually get off their fucking ass and do something about it? Man, I was lucky. I, I just got out. I, I don't even know how that happened. That just happened. But I was talking to my wife earlier. And I, I did mention to her that if if I was back in the States and I wasn't living the life that I live today, I'd probably be a completely different person. I'd be in the middle of something trying to get something done. But Wow, there's so many things to attack to protect yourself from. Where do you start? I don't know. So, I think I'm just uh, fortunate that things went the way they did and I ended up where I'm at. And, uh, but still like to have the ability to speak to my fellow American specter in American world. <laughs> Plus, I, I like speaking English. I don't speak any other language. Never wanted to. Took shit for that my whole fucking life. And now I I'm a foreigner in a foreign land. And the weird thing is, the people accept me for me. And it's got nothing to do with me trying to fit in. I think the, the part they like is that, yeah. I'm cool. If they don't want to talk to me, fine, don't. I I know what English sounds like. I'm not I'm no more insulted that you don't talk to me than if you do cuz you know, you know how conversations can go in public. Sometimes they're a little dull. Then, you know, you might want to talk about this and they might want to talk about that, but there's still none of that, you know. If they don't, then they don't. And I'm not missing anything and th my outlook is so... My wife loves to talk to people and meet people and get in the world and do stuff. And I did all that. I got where I'm at now. No, I'm done. I think I've re So we call it my retirement. <laughs> I've retired from society. <laughs> Whoa. Boy. Bonk heads. No, I got me a little pipe. Where did it go? I almost dropped it. <laughs> anyway, I think I caught the mic before that. I've learned to keep my mute button at hand when I be token so that I don't kill Rob Works on the microphone. Because Rob likes to listen to the show when I don't do it with Vinny for some reason. <laughs> I get a kick out of that. Because, wow. See? Vinny knows the truth at such a deep level, and his experience took him where it took him. And the same goes for Rob, <laughs> and Rob's experience took him where it took him. And in my opinion, they both look at the same thing, and they see it the same way. They just don't agree on the presentation. And <laughs> it makes me laugh, because for once, and I've usually, uh, <laughs> I'm usually the one people are mad at. So it's weird to be on good terms with both people that are in a disagreement at the same time and not be in the disagreement, even though I hold a separate opinion about it to a level. But, you know, that's what I want to help other people do. If there's anything, it's, maybe it's not compromise that I'm so much about is listening to the other side. 
And I was telling Vinny Saturday or Tuesday, I forget which night. Well, I was telling him, you know, you're easy to listen to, but sometimes you don't seem like you listen. And that might be true for me, too, because when you're on the radio and you're involved and this and that, and you got all your ideas of your own in your head, are you really listening to the other monkey talk? <laughs> so, And, you know, Vinny's, Vinny, he's got his plan. And me, I'm kind of free-flowing, and, and I go here and there. Uh, I really miss doing the dork table with Miss Mary because she would be reading links while I'm on a rant. and something. I'm on some deep topic, and I'm being all philosophical and everything, and she just start talking about Lisa B's haircut <laughs> or whatever link she was reading. And, and the dynamics of that, I would laugh and laugh and laugh, and she would throw one-liners and funny jokes. And me and Vinny don't get along at that level of um, comfort. I think it comes down to where the both of us were just comfortable doing it. And me and Vinny have um, disagreements about major shit, I think it comes down to. And, you know, he lives in America, and I don't. So he has an outlook on life that I don't have, and I have got one he doesn't have. And I think the two kind of balance out. But we disappoint the listening audience somehow because of, you know, personal disagreements. And uh, it's... Uh, I really like to do both. I like the solo thing, but I like to do the thing with other people because you never know what's going to happen or who's going to show up, what you're going to talk about. I like the fun in it. And I was really trying to do this more of in a serious, not such a fuck-off, clowny, bullshit way, but <laughs> I'm a clown at heart. I want people to have a good time. You know, I want to have a good time. So I figure if I'm having a good time, Maybe you're having a good time. But one thing I know, if I'm miserable, I don't think you're going to have a good time when I'm around. Because, uh, you know, some of us are like that. We kind of, uh, what's the right way to, it's going to sound egocentric, but if I'm in a bad mood, I can carry that mood and bring you into it if I want to. And if I want to leave that bad mood out and come in clean, I can do that too. So, hmm. now, maybe there's a topic or a two or personality that I don't have that ability as strong with, but it's rare. You know, like my <laughs> worthy adversary. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's more just aggravation from, you know, reading the same tired old shit for years that the guy doesn't seem to really read what you write. He only writes. <laughs> it's so much fun. I'm a sick man. I know. I should get therapy, counseling, psychotic medication, go see Jose, get a bag of hair on. <laughs> go all out. You know what I mean? But, uh, hey, there's always Portugal. You know? If you want true freedom, go to Portugal. You know why? I'll tell you why, being as you asked. The reason I would recommend Portugal is that what they've done is decriminalized drugs. So, now, now this solves problems for everybody. Because, one, if you are a drug addict and drugs are not against the law to possess or to get... Well, half of the crime that's involved in that kind of, you know, perception of that lifestyle is gone. There's no lure. <laughs> it's not illegal. You can have it. Well, then I don't want it. I wanted it because I couldn't have it. Now I can have it. Well, then fuck you. And what the what the state did, instead of criminalizing people that still are active in the drug world, they try to help them. And according to the document I saw, the state is spending less money just treating people that refuse to give in and put the shit down, or can't, whatever the case is. And treating them is less expensive than incarcerating them. The damage that comes from prison 
financially on a family or a group is just incredible. And people don't, you know, the average Joe that doesn't live or know people that have that kind of life or that kind of poverty wouldn't understand. They wouldn't get it. Would never make sense to them. You know, and their response is usually pretty much so, oh, they broke the law, they owe society a debt. No. <sighs> yeah, but, you know, in that little square of your place, they made that legal. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, but that's a bug just in that area. It's not legal over here and over there. And Well, and then we go back to the original problem of it's all in our collective freaking mind. This thing is not real until there are guns and uh, jail cells to deal deal with. There's no reality to any of it. But you get your water and you drive on the roads and you da 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 da. And again, I'm always going to go back to you can write anything you want on a piece of paper, but if there isn't a moron within 50 feet, to carry a weapon and a shiny little piece of metal to identify himself as some kind of superior freaking gorilla, then what's going to happen? You broke a law. So what? Well, maybe in another hundred years, people will mature enough to, for one, teach the young how to behave in life at a better in a better format than what we've been doing. Because I think like movies like Butt Cheek just go to prove the social engineering in our uh, in our entertainment system has failed. <laughs> it's so bad. It's uh, wow. I think me and Frumpy were uh, reminiscing about watching Ozark, and that's got to be. I mean, it, you know, I I I would complain about the tweaker cam being put up as a form of entertainment because that's real the movies tv shows and that's fantasy so somewhere people seem to not be able to separate that that you're watching make believe these are actors oh but they make millions of dollars and that and that and that whole mentality changes the way that average joe's mind interprets what he sees on a tv set and i'll end it with this the moon unit night moon unit the moon landing moon unit that's frank zappa's daughter I told you i was tired anyway the moon landing in 1969 <laughs> there you go what more is there to fucking know if you don't know that that never took place then everything after it how can it be true so if you believe that, and a lot of people believed it because they saw it on TV, that's the the catch to get you to believe the fantasy that you saw and defend it into your you know nineties because I saw it on TV. Damn you, hippie scum. <laughs> anyway, and with that, we gonna call this and that here in Denmark. Hey, Graham Z. I don't know if Graham can hear me, but um, I'm going to say hey to Miss Mary on the RLM before I close out here. And what we got Thursday, this is um, Thursday night afternoon for my friends and bots back in reallibertymedia.com chat land. And uh, what do we got? <gasps> Whoa, excuse me, had a hiccup there. We have uh, Miss Mary. Wait, no. Tomorrow. Is Vinny on the schedule or is he off the schedule? Mm. I don't know. I haven't chatted with him since Tuesday. I don't know. But I will say if, in fact, Mr. Vincenzo has a show, it'll be on Friday on the Real Liberty Media dot com called uh, Ponder Gander. And that'll be Vinny the Vinny the Vinny. And then Friday night, Miss Mary comes in on the rocket chair, at 6 o'clock East Coast, if I'm right, Miss Mary. I don't There's a time change coming up. Anyway, Real Liberty Media, Miss Mary in a rocket chair. After that, a little bit later, I think it's 10 o'clock, we got Grimner and Moose Girl doing 
the Freaker's Ball. Unless Moose escapes her house and goes to the bar and then Grimner will do balls to the wall. <laughs> Saturday I come back with God only knows who I can kidnap. Hey, Miss Kate. Nice to see you again. Uh, for the Dork Table podcast on Saturday. And I do that on, uh, I think it's noon Eastern time because it'll be 6 o'clock here in the evening. I like to do the evening time. It's easier for me. Less stuff going on. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, I'm real busy in the in the daytime with my uh, <laughs> dog and cat and wife. <laughs> anyway, yeah, Van Meter, nighty night. And then uh, Sunday morning, we got Gribner comes on, plays the blues. Plays the blues into, and sometimes during the trivia, I've well, some I watch movies with my wife, so sometimes we don't listen. <laughs> We're terrible people, but we play trivia until Hal Anthony comes on from behind the woodshed and whoops, uh, you know, a little can of whoop ass all over you. And then Monday night, we got Grimner comes in with <laughs> Grim leftovers, and he says he's got a backlog of things that he tries to get to and read and inform everybody about on Freaker's Ball, but doesn't have enough time to do it. So he does an extra hour on Monday. And so far he's been doing that at 7 p.m. on the East Coast, I believe. Uh, Then Tuesday night, I've been doing this weird thing called In a Perfect World with Vincent. On and off, we've been doing it together and separate for a while now. On Tuesday night at 7 p.m. on the uh, Danemark, so it's 1 o'clock on the East Coast. And then Wednesday night, Miss Mary comes back one more time, uh, 6 o'clock p.m. on the East Coast with the Rocket Chair Podcast. And with that, I say goodnight to all the bots and bodies out there in reallibertymedia.com and beyond <laughs> it's been fun i had a lot of fun tonight i i, I really kind of hope that you know i'll joke aside for just one moment that the the links that i recommend if you've never heard the show before or if you have and you've never watched the links it's time do a little research type a few things in and get started and if you find something that convinces you <laughs> Start chatting in small rooms and find out what's really going on. It can't hurt. Good night, everybody.